Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing asthma and anti-asthmatic drugs. Okay, so we've now discussed the allergic adaptive immune response that occurs to allergens in both atopic and non-atopic forms of asthma. Okay, we now want to look at the additional uh, adaptive immune response that occurs only in atopic forms of asthma. Okay, and this is the B cell activation, so this does not occur in non-atopic asthma. And again, we don't know the reasons uh, why some people get atopic asthma and some people get non-atopic asthma. What I'm going to do is merely describe to you what must happen in people with atopic uh, asthma who do get this B cell activation. Okay, so let's now go over how you activate B cells then. Okay, right, so the first thing that I want to talk about is B cells themselves, okay? Uh, because like T cells, there is a huge diversity in B cells. So I'll draw a B cell here. Here's its nucleus. Okay, so B cells produce antibody molecules, these molecules that we've seen before, and every B cell has a certain variable region in its antibodies that it produces. Okay, so each different B cell will produce antibody molecules with a different variable region, basically. Now, I've talked before about how antibody molecules can also have different constant regions, okay? So I've talked about how there are those different types of constant regions, IgG, IgM, IgA, IgD, and IgE. Okay, now, basically, B cells put on their surface um, the, a certain type of antibody molecule that they produce, which is an IgM or IgD molecule that has had a special modification occur to it, which has given it a transmembrane portion. So let me just show this here. Okay, so B cells put on their surface special antibody molecules, okay, which are IgM or IgD molecules, okay, so the constant region of these molecules is either the IgM constant region or the IgD constant region, but these have, are not just normal IgM or IgD molecules, they've had an extra bit added on at the bottom, which is this portion that passes the membrane basically and anchors this special antibody molecule on the surface of the B cell basically. And this special antibody molecule attached to the surface of the B cell is called the B cell receptor. Okay, and for short, the B cell receptor is abbreviated down to the BCR. Okay, so B cells or B lymphocytes like T cells are present in the lymph nodes. You have absolutely loads of them. They all have different uh, B cell receptors with different variable regions, okay, which are capable of binding to different epitopes of different antigens. Okay, now, in people who develop atopic asthma, what must happen is you have to get a B cell allergic adaptive immune response to some epitope of your allergen. Okay, so let's bring the allergen back up again here. Okay, so here is our allergen molecule. Okay, so we are now going to say that we are going to develop a adaptive immune response, a B cell adaptive immune response against a certain epitope of this allergen. Okay, and let's say it's this epitope here, this little portion. We're going to produce um, a B cell response where the B cell has antibody molecules which can bind to this little epitope of the allergen. Okay, right, so how does this occur then? Well, basically, when you breathe in the allergen, what's going to happen is some of the allergen is going to end up crossing the epithelium, okay? And then it's going to go into uh, lymph vessels, okay? So some of the allergen is going to end up going into lymph vessels, and then, of course, what will happen is it will end up getting to lymph nodes here, and therefore it will be exposed to B cells. So now what's going to happen is our allergen molecule coming in here is going to be percolating through this area of lymphocytes, basically. Okay, and now all that has to happen is it has to find one of these B cells that has a B cell receptor which has a variable region capable of binding to some epitope on that allergen. Okay, so back over the page, let's say 
that it just happens to find one of these B cells that does indeed have a variable region uh, which combines to an epitope on that allergen. And we're going to say that this is the epitope that's going to bind here. Okay, so again I'll stress that potentially the difference between uh, these people who develop this B cell allergic response uh, to the allergen and the people who don't is that the people who uh, don't develop the allergic response um, don't have B cells uh, which have B cell receptors with variable regions that combine to epitopes of the allergen. Okay, so maybe the difference lies in the fact uh, that the people who do develop uh, atopic uh, allergies to this allergen have B cells uh, that have um, B cell receptors with variable regions which combine to the epitopes of the allergen and people who don't develop the allergic response don't. Okay, right. Uh, so, now what's going to happen is the allergen is coming in and it's going to bind to the variable region of the B cell receptor here on this B cell that is directed against a certain epitope of that allergen. Okay, so here is the allergen now binding to uh, the B cell receptor. Okay, following this, what's going to now happen is the B cell receptor is going to be internalized with that allergen molecule bound to it, basically. Okay, so let me show this. I'll draw a bigger picture in order to show this. So here now, this is our B cell. Uh, shown larger now, okay? Here is its nucleus again, okay? And now, what's going to happen, completely out of scale of course, but this gets the point across, okay? Is the B cell receptor with the allergen molecule attached to it is now going to be internalized here, okay? So here's the B cell receptor, it's been internalized and it's got the allergen molecule bound to it, okay? So let's just color in the allergen molecule here in vivid purple. Now what's going to happen to this B cell is that it's going to chop up that allergen molecule, okay, and it's going to present fragments of it on uh, its surface on MHC class 2 molecules. So basically, the, to get the core message across here, B cells cannot just activate on their own. You might be thinking, well now surely isn't the B cell just going to activate? It's found its allergen, it's obviously needed, so isn't it just going to activate? Well the answer is no, it's not allowed to. Okay, it has to run it by helper T cells. Okay, it is only allowed to activate if there are also helper T cells which are directed against this allergen. If there are not helper T cells that generated that are directed against this allergen, then you are not allowed to launch a B cell response. Okay, so the T cell response comes first, and then you can activate a B cell response if and only if you've got a T cell response, okay? And I should have said uh, only if rather, not if and only if, okay? You don't necessarily launch the B cell response if you've got the T cell response. It's only if you've got the T cell response. Okay, right. Uh, so, what's now going to happen then is the B cell internalizes this allergen it's bound, okay? And what's it, what it's now going to do is it's going to chop that up and put fragments of the allergen on its surface bound to MHC class 2. So this, once again, is an MHC class 2 molecule, and now you're going to have little fragments of the allergen molecule bound to the MHC class 2 molecule. Okay, so I'll color in this fragment of the allergen molecule here in purple. Okay, and then we'll color the rest of the MHC class 2 molecule in, in blue here. Okay, so that's our MHC class 2. Okay, now what it needs to do is it needs to find T helper cells uh, that uh, have got T cell receptors uh, which are directed against a fragment of this allergen. So remember, of course, it's broken up this allergen into loads of different fragments. So it'll have loads of different fragments presented on MHC class 2 molecules on its surface. It just now needs to find some sort of T helper cell, and this can be a T helper 1, T helper 2, T helper 17 cell that has a T cell receptor on its surface which is against one of these fragments. Okay, so let's say that it happens to do this. Okay, so let's say it puts on its surface um, the fragment that we have launched a T cell response against. Okay, so it can now find T helper cells which have T cell receptors which are capable of binding to this 
uh, allergen fragments loaded on MHC class 2. Okay, so here is our T helper cell, and I won't say specifically which type it is, uh, but obviously if we're talking about asthma, it would probably be T helper 2, so I might just put T helper 2 there. Okay, but it could be T helper 1 or T helper 17. Okay, right, not only will the T cell receptor bind to the MHC class 2, but of course you'll also get uh, the CD4 binding to the MHC class 2. So here is our CD4 binding to the MHC class 2. And here is our T cell receptor on the surface of our T helper cell that is directed against that specific fragment of the allergen molecule there. Okay, and I'll just give the T helper 2 cell a nucleus. Okay, now the key thing then that then activates the B cell is that when you form this junction here, you will also have the CD40 ligand molecule of the T helper 2 cell interacting with a receptor on the surface of the B cell. And unfortunately, this receptor is going to have to go right through that MHC class 2 label there. Okay, so let me colour this receptor in first. Okay, so the receptor for CD40 ligand, you might be able to guess what this is. It, will, it is CD40, basically. Okay, so in yellow there, we have CD40 ligand on the surface of the T helper 2 cell. Okay, in turquoise here, we have CD40. And basically, when you get the MHC class 2 binding to the T cell receptor like this, along with the CD40 ligand binding to the CD40, that now gives the signal uh, to the B cell that it can activate, basically. Okay, so this is how a B cell gets the signal to activate. It can only be activated if you have the T cell response. Okay, if you don't have the T cell response, then forget it. The allergen on its own cannot activate the B cell. Okay, right. So now what happens once the B cell has received this stimulatory signal is that it now is going to divide and divide and divide and divide. Okay, so proliferation is going to follow. Okay, another process called affinity maturation occurs, which we're not going to go through because it's quite complicated. Okay, so to keep this simple, um, we're just going to say the B cell proliferates and proliferates and proliferates. It's a useful simplification. Okay, after all, we just want to know uh, the core uh, pathophysiology of asthma. We're not interested in the uh, details of immunology. Okay, right. So to simplify it down, uh, the B cell proliferates and proliferates and proliferates. So you get loads of B cells being produced here. Okay, so these are all now B cells. And what can now happen is the B cells can start to differentiate into plasma cells. Okay, so this is proliferation. And then the next process that's going to occur is differentiation. Okay, and these B cells can now start to proliferate, sorry, differentiate into plasma cells. Now draw a plasma cell here. So plasma cells look very different to B cells. Okay, they're very long oval shaped cells, like so. Okay, and the nucleus is shoved to one side. Okay, and in the side opposite where the nucleus is, okay, so in this portion here, you have basically an area for production of antibody molecules. Now, plasma cells are effectively just antibody-producing machines. They chuck antibody molecules out at an incredible rate. Okay, so the other important thing that I want to talk about now is which type of antibody molecule the plasma cells then secrete. Okay, because I told you about how there are these many different types of antibody molecules. So there are, remember, IgG, IgM. IgD, IgA, and IgE. Okay, and remember these all differ in which constant region you use, basically. Okay, now the decision as to which uh, type of antibody molecule the plasma cell is going to make is decided in the differentiation process. So once a B cell has differentiated into a plasma cell, the type of antibody molecule that the plasma cell produces is set. Okay, now usually plasma cells go on to produce IgG. That's the main type of antibody molecules that usually you generate plasma cells uh, which can produce that. Okay, however, 
in asthma, what's going to happen is these B cells are mainly going to differentiate into plasma cells, which then produce IgE. Now, what causes that? What drives uh, these B cells to differentiate into plasma cells, which produce this odd form of immunoglobulin molecules, okay, IgE? Well, it's interleukin-4, which we know is this important cytokine released by the T-helper-2 cells, which are really important in asthma. So interleukin-4 is absolutely key in driving these cells to differentiate into plasma cells, which produce IgE, basically, rather than the more normal IgG. Okay, right. So basically, when you've launched this T-helper-2 response, and they're now uh, producing interleukin-4, when you then launch the B cell response, you're going to end up producing plasma cells that produce IgE antibodies against uh, certain epitopes of the allergen. Okay, and then after we got that bit, we know then what happens. We know the story from now. The IgE molecules end up in the lamina propria. They end up mounting on top of the mast cells. Okay. And that is why in a topic asthma, you're also able to get these allergic asthmatic attacks where actually breathing in the allergen to which you have launched this allergic adaptive immune response is capable of causing an asthmatic attack because it's capable of activating the mast cells. Okay, so we now have the complete story of the pathogenesis of asthma, okay? We'll call it there for this video and in the next video we'll now talk about the anti-asthmatic drugs.